As it turns out, God designed our bodies to move. Muscle movement pulls on tendons, tugging on our bones, which stimulates bone growth and density, and the contraction of muscles produces electrons. See, electrons are good for our cells, and germs and toxins are constantly stealing electrons from our cells. But antioxidants donate electrons back to replace what was stolen, and exercise is a powerful antioxidant. When we exercise and move around, we breathe deeply, taking in gobs of oxygen. That's a technical term, gobs. Most chronic diseases are in large part due to lack of oxygen at a cellular level. And things like hyperbaric oxygen chambers, hydrogen peroxide, and ozone therapies do increase the body's oxygen supply. But the old-fashioned way is best. Just move around and breathe deeply. And then there's the lymphatic system, garbage pickup service of the human body. Your body dumps a lot of dead germs and waste products into the lymph system. So that fluid needs to move to get those toxins out of you and keep you healthy. But unlike your blood vessels, which have your heart to pump blood around your body, the lymphatic vessels have no built-in pump. They rely on, you guessed it, movement, muscle contraction to make the lymph flow. The many benefits of exercise or just plain moving instead of sitting around cannot be overstated. So I'll continue to state some more interesting facts about moving around. Harmful chemicals get released by the body when it's under stress or inflammation and exercise produces an enzyme that detoxifies these chemicals. Myokines are chemicals released by muscles during exercise, especially during high-intensity interval training. Myokines liberate fat cells, increase insulin sensitivity, and decrease inflammatory chemicals. 304 different studies, when summarized, show that exercise beats drugs in positive outcomes for heart disease and prediabetes. There's a 40% reduction in all-cause mortality that's pretty much death by anything. By 30 minutes of exercise, six days a week. Exercise boosts memory and cognitive functions and prevents brain shrinkage, which is actually a thing. Lack of exercise disrupts your circadian rhythm. So if you're having trouble sleeping, maybe it's because you're doing too much sitting, which brings us to some detrimental effects of sitting all day. Women in a study who sat roughly seven hours a day, had a 47% increase in a rate of depression. Anxiety, depression, and poor self-esteem all increased with less exercise. There's a 10% increase in risk of cancer with each two hours per day of uninterrupted sitting. You are six times more likely to die of heart disease with a sedentary versus an active lifestyle. More exercise in your teens and 20s equals better brain memory scores in your 40s and 50s. So don't just sit there and stare at that screen. Go do something. Uninterrupted sitting all day causes an earlier death, even if you exercise at the end of the day. Okay, so it's pretty clear. Exercise makes you happier, more healthy, and more alive longer. But what kind of exercise is best? Handstand running? Competitive standing? Trampolining? Well, it's actually high intensity interval training, or HIT for short. It's the best way to increase metabolism, build muscle, and has the best cardiovascular effects. In just 20 minutes of HIT, only two to three times a week, beats long, steady aerobics for 45 minutes, five days a week. So get up from your desk or your couch every hour or so and walk around a little bit. And do some more intense exercise a few times a week. The benefits to your overall well-being are undeniable.